Nice up. Nice call. Nice dig. My name is Doug Beal. I coach the U.S. men's national volleyball team. The players you see warming up behind me are members of that team that will be representing the United States in the 1984 Olympic Games in Los Angeles. We're doing a series of videotapes on the skills of volleyball. Each tape will follow the same format. We'll begin each tape by demonstrating the particular skill that we're involved with. After we demonstrate the skill in its entirety, we'll go through a teaching progression which will show you how we develop the skills of these players on our team. After the teaching progression, we're going to demonstrate some drills that we use which allow us to incorporate that particular drill, uh, skill into the tactics that we use with our team. It's important to remember that even though these are men performing these skills and demonstrating the drills, that everything applies to both men and women. The skills are the same. We're going to be demonstrating in skill tape number six, backcourt defense. You're going to see our players demonstrating that skill right now. Back row defense is a group of skills used by both men and women and are very critical in the point-making plays of volleyball. Uses are several. One is digging hard-driven spikes. Two is tip recovery and off-speed shot recovery. And thirdly, uh, the skill of handling the deflected ball coming off the block. The skills used in, uh, in uh, back row defense are diving, front diving, two rolling, which is a full roll and a half roll, thirdly the sprawl, and fourthly a technique called the J-stroke. In this tape we will describe all of these skills. My name is Bill Neville, I'm the assistant coach of the USA men's volleyball team, and to help me demonstrate these skills, the first of the front dive will be Steve Salmon. Steve? At this point, I'd like to say that defense, first of all, is, a, is an attitude, a mental attitude. The player must have the absolute intention and desire to get any ball which is hit on his side of the floor and keep it off the floor with it, and not allowing it to contact the floor. He must have the attitude that he is going to go after it no matter where the ball goes, and every drill must be designed to reinforce and encourage this attitude. The purpose of the dives, the rolls, and the sprawls is to allow this player physically to go after the ball and not maim himself in the process so they can come back for yet another play. The skills are designed to avoid the body hitting the corners of the body or the sharp points, starting with the toes, coming up to the ankles, the ankle bones on the outside, the knees, the points of the hips, pelvis, the shoulders, the corners, the points of the shoulders, elbows, the wrists, and finally, the corners of the head, and your right, the chin. Okay. We're going to start by teaching the dive. Steve, get down on your knees. Please. The first in a series of progressions is that the player starts on his knees, so we get him as close to the floor or the, the thing he's going to have to make contact with with his body. He gets into a position here. We establish on the floor in front of him about two meters, one of the lines on the boards. He's going to reach out, keep his, his heels up, his knees bent, arch his back, and slide and make contact from the sternum down. Okay, just reach out and slide out. This way, he reaches out forward. Okay, again, this time catch yourself on your hands. Just kind of pull yourself through. Right there, from the knees, the player must become familiar with the floor. And we start him low. Again. This is the first progression. Notice how he's kicking up his heels. Okay, come back. He, he is avoiding those corners of the body that we described by sliding from the sternum through the abdomen and on the thigh. 
All right, good. Okay? After they've done that and become familiar with that and not hitting the toes, they come up on one knee, like this. We extend his contact point of the floor farther out in front. I want you to move back just a little bit. So that now he's going to reach out and make contact with his hands approximately out here. He is going to rock off his front foot. He's going to keep essentially his back foot in that same position with the knee bent, the heel up, and this foot that is now in the kneeling position is going to join that other foot so that they don't slam the toe or the knee into the floor. He's going to cushion and bring himself into a landing and slide through again from the sternum on down. Go ahead. Rock, slide, and catch, and slide through. Okay, come on back and demonstrate again. Again, in progression, we do several of these. Go ahead. Notice it's quiet. He, he slides through. He does not land hard. Come on, just keep doing it. He does not catch himself. His, his hands as they make contact simply are a guide to allow his body to slide through. His contact is here. The key problem with learning how to dive is oftentimes their first contact is the chin. You want to avoid this by arching the back. The hands get contact and allow the body down. Players will also have a tendency to catch themselves on their shoulder, on with their shoulders, and they can hurt their shoulder. Okay, one more time. We're talking about a body, an arch, leading with the head. The legs and feet are held up to avoid hitting the knees and the toes. Now let's look at this progression from the side. So just turn this way. They get down on both knees. Again, he's down on both knees, close to the floor. He reaches, we, we put a mark on the floor, approximately two meters out in front of him. He's going to dive. Go ahead, just start him. He arches his back. Okay, just keep going. He goes just nice and low. The legs stay up. He bends the knees. When the knees are bent, he, keeps, he, he gets the knees out of the way. The toes are up so he doesn't bang them. He arches his back, he keeps his chin from contacting, and his arms, which are going to contact the ball, are what are out in front of him. Okay, now, up on one knee. Okay, here, now we get him up in the kneeling position. He's going to rock off his front foot, catch himself with his hands, slide through, contacting again, just from the, the sternum down, arching the back, keep him away from the chin, and slide through. Go ahead. Slide through, this way. He, has, he contacts the ball prior, or plays the ball prior to, to catching himself on the floor. It's important that the player does not try to stop himself because it puts a terrific pressure on both shoulders. It jars. It jars the shoulder. What we want to do is a smooth transition through the arm so that the, the bulk of the pressure is put on the chest or the sternum. Sorry, the sternum on down. Okay. Okay, the next, the next progression then, we'll go back forward again. He gets into a ready defensive position. I'd like to describe that now. First, one foot is in front of the other. The knees are inside and in front of the big toe. This puts the player in a position where if he brought his elbows inside his knees, they would touch the knees and his fingers to touch the floor inside and in front of the toe. This puts the player in a position that is forward, his back is straight, his eyes are on the attacker, which in this case would be where you are watching from right now. Okay. When the ball is being attacked, he shifts his feet underneath his knees, which puts him forward. This puts his weight forward or towards the ball again. So that if everything stops, okay, just shift your feet, he would fall forward. That's where you want your weight to be, is going towards the attack. Again, shift and fall forward. Shift, that if everything stopped, he would fall essentially on his face. The tendency, and this is a description of what should not be done, but the tendency is that a defensive player will shift his feet forward, and therefore his weight goes backwards. We do not want this. We want a forward movement. Again, demonstrate the correct way. Feet shift back, and his weight would go forward. Okay. 
If he shifts the other way, not correct, his weight will be back and he will not be able to play a ball in front of him. This is the ready position for all defensive moves, preparatory motion. From here then, let's go back to the diving uh, technique. He's in a ready position, he shifts, and now we have another line much farther out. His range increases much farther forward. So now he shifts to this ready position and just dive on out there, do it several times. And now he goes. Okay, come on back. Ready position, he gets ready, he goes. Again, if you'll notice, he is not hitting any of the corners of his body, the toes, the knees, the elbows, anything like that. He's taking the bulk of his weight from his sternum on down, and his back is arched. Okay. Now let's look at it from the side. Let's look at it. Again, the ready position, you'll notice the feet will go back underneath the knees, then he goes forward into the dive. Shifts, dives, and he gets out after the ball. He shifts so his weight is forward, and then he goes to the ball. Again, notice the shift of the, of the leg. Underneath, the force of his body forward, and he goes forward. Okay, let's turn back the other way. Diving is probably the most versatile of, of the defensive skills to get to the ball. He can go forward immediately, or from this ready position, he can turn or cross step quickly and dive to either side. First of all, we'll demonstrate going to Steve's left. Ready position, his feet he sets, and then he turns and dives to his left. Okay, come on back. Again, he gets ready, the ball is deflected off the block, he must make the change. Okay, now to the right. He gets again the ready position, shifts, goes to the ball. The player with the diving technique can cover up to half the court in any direction, any point of the, of the compass. You're right. And it's very quick, and it can come from a run or from a standing position. He can also turn and go backwards and get a ball that goes behind. He shifts, he sees the ball goes, he turns, and he would hit this ball back over his head towards the court. He's covering now a large, large area with the dive. Okay. Those are the, the skills of dive. But as we teach it, we start from, from the knees, then to that kneeling position, then from a standing position, and they practice just from a standing start, and they go to all points of the compass. The third progression, and, and the first one that involves the ball, is simply that as the coach gets into a position in front of the player. He's going to assume a ready position. I'm going to throw a ball within his diving range, first of all, directly to his front. To measure this, we, again, describe a number that he must succeed in getting the, the balls up, let's say 15 to 20, that he has to get up successfully. It is important when the coach throws the ball that he throws it underhand with both hands. He throws it out. And in an area, we are not, we're not attempting here to make him work at his maximum. We're trying to teach him the skill. Therefore, we want to make sure that he essentially knows where the ball is. Of course, something that the opponent is not going to do later on. And for him to learn it, he must learn, first of all, the technique. Move back a little bit. Front technique. Now, if you'll notice, the the contact in the ball is very similar to the forearm pass. He's getting it just above his wrist. He gets the ball up in the air. His movement is from the shoulder. He arches the back as he arches the back, puts him automatically into a posture that allows the ball to come up. As he arches his back, his arms follow through, and this puts the ball high in the air. He must get the ball high so that his teammates can get under it and turn it over into a potential point-making play. After he has completed X number of successful repetitions forward, then we concentrate on moving him to his left and then his right. So to the left, really bring it up high, so he's right back. Notice he modifies his rebound angle. He leans out forward to get the ball up in the air where it's playable. Reaching high, making the ball 
getting underneath the ball, making the ball get up as high as possible. Okay, then we have him go to his right. Okay. As he gets better at this, we make the process more and more difficult. So he has to really extend. As soon as, as you'll notice, as soon as the ball becomes tougher and he has to reach farther, he uses just one hand. That one he could get with both. But he will eventually have to use only one hand to get to the ball. Because the ball, he has to extend himself further. Three. Okay, again. After he has done it left, right, and forward, then we get to the tough one. And we make him move, and I'm going to throw the ball back over his head, so he must turn and run and try to bring it back into the court. This is by far the most difficult move. Well, again, turning and running. He has to make that arching play. He arches it back. His balance is going one way. The dive here is simply in recovery. Because he's losing his balance in making contact with the ball. The dive allows him to do that and then save himself from getting injured. After he has completed several successful repetitions of getting the ball off the floor, 